What's up, library enthusiasts? <laughs> They're so enthusiastic. Uh -huh. And hello to Chad. Hi, I will be the blankie. Um, so I, 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 I got Paul. Paul, what'd you do? What'd you do next time? I, I made somebody mad somewhere. <laughs> We've. This is going to be a a very. Uh, it's going to be a special episode for multiple reasons. I'm going to give you the first reason, which is it's Love Your Library Month, which means that if you uh, are a fan of public libraries in the Allegheny County area... Uh, you should be. Yeah, yes. You absolutely should be. Yes. Uh, you can donate to the uh, two public libraries, and the Jacques Buncher Foundation will partially match them. I don't know the exact percentage because they're rich people and don't speak to pores. <laughs> but, uh, it, you know, I'll just say that your donations will probably be doubled or some other multiple that is more than one. Put it like that. <laughs> if you go to www.loveyourlibrary.org and go and search for your local library, we're of course Moon Township Public Library, only kind of hold it against it and decide to donate to a different one. And if you can't afford it, no big deal, just tell other people to donate or sign up for a library card close to you. Whatever. Spread the word, folks. Yeah, because you know what? These. Uh, can you turn. Yes, I can absolutely turn up my voice volume a little bit. Actually, it's as high as it can go. I'm gonna move my mic a little bit closer. Maybe that'll be a little bit better. I'm a small, I'm a soft talker, which I apologize for. Um, okay, so that's that's how it be when you live in the library. Yes. <laughs> uh, you do live in the library, right? Yeah, it's just like it's like school teachers. Yeah. And vampires. They don't go home. No, I'm. De <laughs> We're definitely. Uh, you know, hiding in the rafters, in the stacks. You don't know where we are. We're not gonna. Yeah, tell you. that's that's kind of how it. That's kind of what I thought. <laughs> All right, and um, so yes, donate to Love Your Library if you can, and because uh, you know what, <sighs> these evil overlords will not give the library its funding, and it's just the the worst. Cause like. It's Love Your Library Month, and we're getting no love. No love? None. Come on! None. Look at that evil. Look at that money-grubbing evil. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in reflection of it being um, Love Your Library Month and Stump the Artist Day, and also Paul's Technical Problems Day, <laughs> <laughs> This is a special only I am doing the art today episode. <laughs> so to to change it up, I, I have a, a different idea of when when Paul's um, tablet decided to die, I have determined that we are gonna do something else. He might be joining later on if it decides to live again, but Paul We'll see. Paul, this is a this is a um a a personal stump the artist. You, um, just tell me what to draw. Like, what do you like to see me draw? And I'm gonna oh. draw it today. This is the, this is the, uh, uncharitably speaking, Pimp the Artist episode. <laughs> 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 he, I, I get to be personally stumped by Paul. Alright, alright. Oh, man. Here we go. Alright, what have I got for ya? Can you... Let's see. Make sure this is working. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Can you incorporate 
I'm thinking a... While I'm drawing you as evil, because you're in charge now. I'm evil this week. <laughs> I'm very evil. It's just <laughs> infectious. <laughs> Alright, I... Let's see. I've got three words. Okay, okay. Uh, DJing. D DJing, okay. Yep. Uh, spacecraft. Spacecraft, okay. And quilts. Quilts. Mm-hmm. Wow. Huh. Yeah. Quilts? Mm-hmm. Quilts. <laughs> quilts. Okay. All right. Hmm. And evil Paul. Okay. Yep. I can't tell you where my mind comes up with such things, but... I don't, I don't know. You it's know. come up with them nonetheless. <laughs> Will be the blankie, appropriately enough, has suggested dance floor looks like a quilt? Yeah, maybe. That is actually true. That is, that is possible. But, um... I, I've got... I have a different idea. I'm gonna boo Paul real quick. Boo! Okay. <laughs> uh, DJing, spacecraft, and quilt delete selection. Okay. So, let us try. <laughs> let me let me zoom in. Fit this thing on screen. Move. Move. There we go. All right. So, my original idea for today's episode was going to be Cozy Mysteries, Ooh. and oh, this, looks, this looks like a, this looks like a cat, okay, well it doesn't matter, spaceships can, uh, they can look they, like whatever they want, they can look, look like, now it looks more like a, like a weird, um, an indie video game dog or something, um, <laughs> and, uh, Cozy mysteries are like if you go into a store and uh, if you get the if you get the books that's like it's like double chocolate murder or something <laughs> like death by chocolate you know, that's a very good oh, example man. of one and death by chocolate yeah and it's got like usually um, like a pastry or like a very cozy looking bakery storefront or something on the front. I w I'm gesturing with my hands, which is not good when I'm supposed to be drawing. I'm the only one drawing. I will do the gesturing here. <laughs> yes, Bobby yes. is definitely on camera. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I figured that, that would be a good theme to go with, with it being fall. Uh, you know, well, it's not fall yet, but it will be soon. We're getting there and I'm excited. Yes. Alright, I think I'm going to have this be a very cozy spacecraft DJ. And the spacecraft is so cozy that it's like made out of, made out of quilts. I love that already. A, a quilt craft, if you like. Quilt craft. Yes, the <laughs> the grandmotherly variant of uh, of uh, Minecraft is quilt craft. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this has got to be. I'm thinking maybe maybe it's the quilt craft is powered or maybe piloted by um, by by spinning. Some uh, some hot records, the, the ones in, in twos and the pearl ones in twos. Oh wait, that's knitting. You heard it here, folks. That, that's knitting. Damn it. <laughs> but it fits. It, it fits. fits. It fits. You know what? We'll, we'll pretend that I got it right. I don't. I don't know quilting terms. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to report that the sound is- the music's working today. Um, it was not last- last time we did this, uh, which is 
unfortunate. It made it for a very sterile sounding episode. Yes. A silent wind. Yes. Okay. I'm like trying to go, go try, trying to go fast <laughs> so it doesn't get too boring here. Um, so I'm glad I'm glad that it, it's fixed, especially on an episode where I'm the only one drawn. <laughs> Yes, yes, if if I can't provide if I can't provide. Yeah. And that's that. Yeah, if if you if you can't if you can't provide, um then don't. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. If you can't provide folks, then don't. We're we're feeling very deep today. <laughs> real deep. We're real deep. I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm trying to make it, like, it's just a big, cozy, um, stellar traveler spacesuit thing. I'm just gonna have to assume that their legs on the other side of this, uh, space dog ship. Uh, I don't know. Alright, so... You know what? Here, I can... There's... Hey, hey, cats? No, my cats aren't here. I was gonna yell at my cats to, uh, attack the moth that's bothering me, but it's not, it's not gonna happen. Okay, so... Not even I can help with that. Nope, you sure can't. So I think to make it truly, truly a space quilt worthy, I think... Uh, I'll turn this shape into some kind of bed. Ooh, okay, I dig that idea. Okay. Space bed. Space bed, and then... Ooh. That way we can, uh, by we I mean me. <laughs> Paul, why does, why does it have to be broken today, Paul? Paul, why? I don't, I don't like it. For those of you at home, I'm, uh, just... Jamming on the power button on my Surface Pro over and over again. You've had that and thing forever, though, haven't you? Yeah, it is the very first generation of Surface Pro. Yeah, so it might have just like, you know, it just tapped out. It was just like, no, I'm not, I'm not doing stuff, the artist. No, I'm, I'm done. Yeah. I'm done forever. <laughs> I've had power issues before where I just, it just doesn't turn on or it just doesn't turn off. Uh, right now the screen is on, but it is blank. Yeah, I, I recall that happening to mine at some point. Okay, this is looking weirder. I don't know what I'm doing, which is nice. But it is looking cozier. It is looking co You know, I'm trying to get them cozy, cozy space vibes. Not only would I sleep on that bed, on that space spacecraft, I would DJ on that spacecraft. This is spacecraft. good to know, because you actually have DJed before. I have a couple times. Yeah. Oh, I'm no pro, folks, but I've done it. He, he's, you know, we, you might have heard it before, but he's got a he's got a good DJ voice. Yep, I've I've been on the radio. Whoa. For those of you who are um, a young, that's um, it's like a podcast or a stream, but um, not. It's like Spotify when we're talking. Yeah. We talk about stuff, and then sometimes we play music. Yep. What's happening? What's happening over here? What's happening over here? I'm erasing. What's happening over it's there? Just, I don't know. Whatever. This is the sketch layer. Nothing matters. Hey, hey, hey! Yelling at my tablet like I was.
Sure. Sure, why not? Why not just make it like a big old space bullet thing? It doesn't need to Gotta be breathe while you're DJing. Yeah, it doesn't need to be realistic or anything. Nah. I'm quite partial to fiction myself. <laughs> I'm something of a fictioneer myself. <laughs> Turns out sometimes it's great to escape from your life. I have no idea what you're talking about, Paul. I love just being thrust into reality constantly. We do live in like a really good world that's like yeah, no, nah, there's no problems with right. it. Right, no. There, there are zero problems with it. Except for the library's funding. That's the only one. Yeah, that is, that is. We are, it's kind of amazing, really. So I'm gonna, uh, to make it more spaceship-like, I'm going to make it seem like this is just a bed inside of a, um, like a traditional disc-shaped UFO. I dig that. There are different traditional sh shapes of, Uf of UFOs. I believe triangles are one of them. I do not know them offhand. I am not that particular kind of nerd. I also don't know if MUFON still exists, the Mutual UFO Network, but you can look MUFON. up- MUFON. Yeah. But you can look up what are considered the standard uh, shapes types of UFOs, also called Unidentified Aerial Phenomena by the United States government. Crassless says, hola, hola, como estas? Como estas, dead? We're doing okay. This is a I am the only one drawing episode because Paul's, Paul's freaking- Paul sucks. Paul, Paul's the worst. Everyone yell at Paul. <laughs> He's a big garbage. With garbage technology. So, I'm sorry. Here's spaceship quilts. DJ. Okay. I don't know what's going on with this device. But I'm going to. This way it looks mildly more like it might be a control console as opposed to just a thing. <laughs> there we go. Uh <laughs> to Max Folk. Yes. <laughs> this is uh, some real um, flipping uh, Deltron 3030 vibes for those of you. Who Ooh, are... yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, 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 oh, I see. So I was on the correct layer. It was just the opacity was wrong. Very well. I have fixed it. Chat, stick figures are very important. So don't, uh, you know. Yes, chat, chat. Uh, they are important. Said that, you know, I would be. <laughs> uh, I would be only be able to draw stick figures, but you know what? We all, we all start somewhere. Stick figures are extremely effective. They worked for Paleolithic Man. Plus, if you draw a stick figure, that's how you build out from. You can build out from there. Exactly. It's like bones. It is indeed. I'm I'm a fan of this um, particular, I guess, space outfit because this helmet part reminds me of like the soft cloth helmets that they um they wore for um apollo missions like underneath the helmet 
Uh, yeah. And you can make that quilted. Yes, you can. Take a look at your hand. Look how complicated it is. <laughs> look at how many parts and junk there are. Yeah. Also, perspective is hard. I don't know what's up with this dude's body. I'm gonna not worry about it. Space just mess with his bones. I mean, it does. They, if you're in space for too long, you lose bone density, and uh, it is extremely difficult, if not impossible, to get back. It is a genuine concern. About like this is not really like muscles that you can just work out and you can't work out your bones. That's as right. far as I know. stellar space travel with humans is the loss of bone density. That they would just become so incredibly brittle over time that by the time they got to another planet, um, it just wouldn't be able to move without breaking everything. Shit on screen. Um, and... Uh, so, uh, I, I know this because I read a book by Mary Roach called Packing for Mars which is a non-fiction book. Mary Roach does a lot of um, fun non-fiction uh, books about uh, man's uh, preparation and uh, attempts to go into uh, space. Because when you think about it, we have absolutely no reason why we should be up there. <laughs> it makes no sense. <laughs> um, and so she she talked about um, how there were people who were like astronauts who never left the planet, and I don't mean like ones that are um, uh, like you know doing studies. Like, or just like, you know, hadn't had their chance to go up yet or, or anything. We're talking about ones who were like volunteers who basically like had to just like stay in bed for like six months at a time to simulate the, the kind of bone loss that they would get if they were traveling in outer space. That's pretty wild. It is. It's very wild. I mean, I'll say sometimes I feel like, you know, Staying in bed for six months at a time, but I mean, not for science. Yes, <laughs> and it's called clinical depression, which is why you should go speak to your doctor. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, and also there are other there are also other reasons. You know, you might have uh, other disabilities which would allow you to do that. But this was in in respect to um, uh, interstellar travel, which is a different concern. Nothing wrong with spending all your time in bed if you have a disability which prevents you from moving. This is not a judgment on that. Nope. Okay, I'm gonna try to fix this, this quilt chip a little bit. I'm, I'm giving up on making this look mostly normal. Shape of the of the ship is a nice parallel to 
the spinning of records. That, um... Circles and stuff. So, oh, circles and thank you. I was, I was thinking of, um... This, this looks a little bit more fun, like, um... Yeah, oh, my original idea was, like, there would be... It's like how you, when you see, like, DJs, like, on TV or whatever, they're always, like, up there in, like, the booth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it ended up... <laughs> woo! <laughs> yes, woo indeed. this one because I'm I think I can get maybe like one or two more in. Before uh before having to wrap it up we'll take a quick picture of, of the max <laughs> of the quilt DJ spaceship thing. There's a lot going on there. Is that, uh, is that that, is that that, that dude's name is Max Funk? It is now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Max Funk. Okay. All right. So. Let me, I'm going to clear. We, I took a picture. I cleared that out. So, Paul, I'll give you a minute to think about what, what other things do you like to see me draw? All right. And you can you, right. you can even pick, you can pick anything within reason. <laughs> <laughs> draw a horse. God damn it. <laughs> Horses are off limits. Draw draw a horse on a motorcycle. <laughs> draw the three hardest things that you can think of. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna go with. Basis of an idea here. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right. Okay. Let's see if I. All right. I'm going to say this. Mm -hmm. Like, what is your interpretation? Could be a loose interpretation of a of white blood cells fighting off a virus okay 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 so i mean my uh see what that does for your brain okay so this one's gonna be really quick because it's basically a thing which already exists what which is in two forms there's osmosis jones Ah, good old Ozzy Jones. And then the other, I, I can't remember exactly what, I think it's called Cells at Work, which is an anime, which is like the same thing as Osmosis Jones, but less, but an anime. So it's more anime. <laughs> anime. Yeah. You get it. I need to, you know, get more up on my media. I mean, not everybody can be things that's true there's a lot of things yeah i was gonna do a tough perspective but i'm not gonna do that because i don't feel like it <laughs> hell yeah It's also just fun to draw lips like this. <laughs> now, what disease was Osmosis Jones fighting off in that movie? I so I don't remember. I remember it had cold-like symptoms. 
because I remembered that they were inside Bill Murray's body. There was a fever at some point. And like, I, I remember his, um, like, snot coming out of his nose. And then, and like, snorking it back up. That's a great visual. Thank you. Somebody who actually does punching on a fairly regular basis. This looks really bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it still looks painful. Smirk. Mm -hmm. Mildly tin tin like. <laughs> mm hmm. Yep. I have not seen cells at work. I just know it by reputation and by scrolling past it on things like Netflix. <laughs> Sometimes that's all it takes. You don't gotta watch everything on Netflix, folks. That's true. Sometimes all you need to do is catch a little uh, glimpse of that title. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there. <laughs> oh, you know what? Uh, I'll give it, give it some of those. Uh, yeah. Uh, virus dealy bops. I think an actual virus looks like this. There's, I'm sure there's like a term for it. <laughs> we prefer dealy bobs in this house. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Strictly speaking, the scientific term is dealy bob. Basically, like, like a doctor punching you. <laughs> <laughs> Our bodies are run by a bunch of tiny doctors. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's extremely scientific. Oops, all doctors. Bloodsolder has also given me some serious uh, uh, Atlantis Man vibes from the what's that Atlantis movie? Um, it's, I think it's called Atlantis. <laughs> ah, and I think the character's name sense. was Milo. Milo, that does sound correct. And he was voiced by um, Michael J. Fox, I believe. What? Once you know that, you can hear it. Now, I've believe, gotta like... I believe Milo's hair was like this. 
Yeah, no, yeah, you're right. The, 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 the droopy bangs. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just leave it because nothing matters. He was not this buff. Maybe I'm just listing off people with glasses, but he's also got some Egon vibes there, too. It's, a, it's, yeah, I mean, it's similar. I'm a, you know, I'm not very particularly good at drawing Egon, but I, I think of him as being more long. Yeah, he's very, he's a long boy. That's totally you got. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for someone who hasn't watched that movie in a while <laughs> and is trying to remember what Egon Spangler looked like off the top of their head, you know. <sighs> There's also a specific term for what a white blood cell is. A bio class in college, and it was hard, and I didn't really understand it. And I understand it less today than ever. However, I'm pretty sure this is spot on accurate of how it happens in the body. <laughs> something good because it's the last one and I'm gonna I'm gonna add color to it and not just kind of kerfuff kerfluffle it. Alright, you ready for this, this one? This very special special. One sec. Um, Milo the white blood cell. Alright. Okay. Alright, tell me tell me what I'm doing. Alright, your prompt is Frankenstein's lobster. I I love this idea. <laughs> I, I like I said, my mind goes to goes places. I can't stop it. You, you can't stop it. Can't stop. Won't stop. Where your mind can't goes. stop. Won't stop. Okay. All right, so I do have to determine if I'm going with the common mm -hmm. definition of Frankenstein, which is the creature, mm -hmm. or the mm -hmm. literary definition, I think. Okay. Um, all right, I'm going to start trying to lobster it up. Man, butter bad. <laughs> um, can I remember what a lobster looks like without looking it up? Eh, close enough. I can close enough it. <laughs> it's, fr it's, 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 oh. it's Frankenstein's lobster. It can be a little wonky. Exactly, yes. Maybe a little, you know, piece is taken here and there. Definitely looks like it's belting out a tune. <laughs> a show tune. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely on stage. Oh gosh. It's just the scene from a um, young Frankenstein, but with a lobster now. <laughs> with a lobster. The remake we all wanted, and yeah. just no one said out loud. I'm 
like trying to remember from episodes of SpongeBob what lobsters look like. <laughs> it's been so long since I've eaten one. And you know, when you eat one, it's just it's just the tail bits usually. I saw a real big old lobster at the uh, aquarium the other day. Yeah. How big was it? Oh man, it was so big. I wish it was a joke I could make a funny. <laughs> Y'all, it was just a really big lobster. Yeah. I got nothing. <laughs> well, let's not stump the comedian. Yeah, thank God for that. <laughs> no, wait, our... I'd be stumped every week. Do lobsters have eye stumps? I think they do. I'm so confused, I don't remember. I might have to cheat and look at what a lobster looks like in a minute. <laughs> numbers I was trying to think between two because they're like the big bugs of the sea yes they are that is why back in the day they were considered peasant food so they're basically ah uh, now they're a delicacy mm -hmm, yep yeah. up and looking at what a lobster looks like. <laughs> lobster. Lobster. But it wasn't a rock. It was a rock? Lobster! Okay, so they don't have eye stalks. No, they have like, well, they have like very short ones. Oh god, what's with their... Okay, okay, I see what I did wrong. It's like a mustache. Ah, oh, it comes out of the front of the face. Yes. Like a maestro. And then what is going on with their mouth? I do not understand. I guess it's like a whole bunch of claws and junk. Claws on claws on claws. Decent approximation of what a lobster looks like. I see so. Alright. I can actually even. It, it just it does this, and it's got this part. Now it just looks really buff. Yeah. Uh, That's a SpongeBob lobster, alright. Oh, okay. So I got we have the two little ones. Looking at a specific kind of lobster, it might be a blue lobster. It has two little arms in front, or you know, ish. The, bl the blue lobster. All right, let me take another look. Okay, I am wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Frankenstein's lobster. All right, I'm just gonna I'm gonna commit to the bit. You know what? And this, I'm just gonna say that they just these these are up there, and then those are down there. That's where Frank put them. Yeah. <laughs> now it looks even more like it's dead. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> Frankenstein's lobster just wants to to be a star. It wants to be a star. Listen, Frank. <laughs> I was meant to be a star. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. I'm in the Broadway. Right. I'm gonna give it the stereotypical hair, the, the flat top. 
<laughs> and the weird little gear things. Specifically a seafood fork, because such a thing probably exists. I can tell you that I have forks in my uh, silverware drawer, both with three and four. Yes. Now, whether you're supposed to use one or the other for seafood, that I can't tell you. I am not a civilized <laughs> being. <laughs> I know. I know some etiquette things, but not the not time related. Uh, yes, not time related. <laughs> if this really is just putting on the Ritz from Young Frankenstein, <laughs> but with a lobster, <laughs> and I'm enjoying it, so I'm okay with it. I uh, yeah, a hundred freaking percent. I'm so on board. <laughs> On lobster live. Get it? Because it's, 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 it's alive. Because <laughs> it's alive. Because it's alive. Putting on the roots crackers. Yes. No, I, th I think you you, cho you chose wisely, Paul. You did not disappoint. <laughs> I, yeah, I saved the best for last. <laughs> <laughs> best plump for last. Okay. I just had to warm my brain up a little bit. Yeah, you know, you gotta loosen up, you gotta do, you know, your, you gotta do zip zap zop for a few hours. Okay, exactly. It's weird freaking mandible mouth that I don't quite understand. Sweet mustache. <laughs> yep. Okay, and then got the weird stitch on skull <laughs> bolts. Then oh, I'm gonna have to do the jaunty hat later. By the jaunty hat later, I guess I meant now. It's an adorable little hat. Just here for Frankenstein's lobster performing, putting on the Ritz crackers. Scracker! This is the special Love Your Library slash Paul's Computer Drawing Tablet Broke special. It's, it's, it's a happy time and a sad time. Such as. Such as life. 
Says Levi, as one of my coworkers says. Says Levi, indeed. I'm gonna, I'm gonna redo the jaunty hat later. I'm gonna work on, work on our buddy first. It has a lobster tail that can have a tux and tails. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's incredible. That's also, perfect. Save me the trouble of having to get the the, the, the large orders right. Or any of that. Yes, he's got sleeves. If we're, if we're if we're being real. So they got sewn on. I mean, technically it has feet. Yeah, so they're, you know, they're just different feet. They've been enhanced. Mm -hmm. With the power of dance. Science. Dance-related science. You know, Dr. Frankenstein was just, was just trying to make, like, the best possible lobster dinner. <laughs> and it just went all Michigan J Frog on it. <laughs> yep, yep. He uh, he accidentally, instead of uh, making the best lobster dinner, he made the best lobster dinner theater. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. No, that was excellent. That was excellent, you utter monster. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so Listen, my hands are free this week. My I'm, 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 my mind is free to betray you all. <laughs> <laughs> I guess to be clear, this is a normal sized lobster. It's <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> dancing on a stage far too large for it. The goal here is to have a whole bunch of lobsters, and <laughs> you could just have each person's dinner table be the stage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it'll be. Um... Uh, closer. Yeah, it'll be like a Michigan J Frog or uh, the Michigan J Frog um, uh, reference in Spaceballs where it's dancing down the diner table. Yes! Gonna, Here's a random question. Why is that frog's name Michigan? There is probably a story behind it, which I do not remember. A, oh, um, chat has chat has said our pun game is a plus tonight, and they have suggested a buffet line, a Claris line. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I like Clara's line. Oh my gosh. Oh wait, what are the, the what is it? The Rockettes? Yeah. 
that's what they're called. The Radio City Rockettes. Radio City Rockettes. The Radio City um, Rock Lobsters. I don't know. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I was going to say it's going to be a, a tough one to make a pun out of, but that's going to be as close as we get. Okay, I feel like this is a superior jaunty hat. I made it much larger. You know what? Let's, let's do a further enhancement. We'll just make it this, this one claw holding it. Ah, yes. No, I don't Tip know that it's, cap. It's doing the weird stuff. Okay. It's improvising. <laughs> kind of like this show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just gotta dance. Gotta dance. Exactly. Okay. I'm gonna turn the switch layer way down. Um. Look at that face. Face only an audience could love. <laughs> Frankenstein's lobster. I keep talking in that one voice. In that one singular voice. <laughs> that was my method for fixing whatever the heck that weird thing was going on. <laughs> Those of you who are young, this is what cursive looks like. It's how the uh, the cavemen used to write in the old days. Yeah, we were kind of, like the last generation that had to learn cursive. I think you're correct. Because it was it was right around uh, us when they started transitioning to having to learn how to type. Mm-hmm. And really the only thing we ever used cursive for was to write a paragraph on the SATs. Yeah, and um... Also signing checks. Signing checks. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I don't know how much cursive I can write anymore, but I can write you my name. made that joke. A drawn butter joke. I was trying to think of one, but I'm drawing at the same time. Yep, yep. Chat's got your back. This is, and this is what a cursive Z looks like. It's wild. It makes no sense. No. In fact, it makes such little sense, I'm gonna not have that in cursive because it's unreadable. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, 
Not that that was any better. Jeez, me. I can see this. I can see the Z in it. same time. <laughs> the audience is really drawn to these performances. They are as smooth Motivation. as butter. <laughs> How'd I do? I feel like that's okay. I feel like that's acceptable. Applause. Applause. A claws. A claws. Uh, also, me half remembering what a uh, fancy white tailed tuxedo looks like from uh, from watching Young Frankenstein a bajillion times. <laughs> <laughs> Jazzy Jazzy RKO style lightning bolts. <laughs> For the flare. Yes, which I don't. I, I apparently am very dysfunctional in drawing. <laughs> That is a show poster. <laughs> jazz claws. Jazz claws indeed. These are really yeah. big jazz claws. Listen, lightning happens in the blink of an eye. How are we supposed to know what it looks like? How are we supposed to truly know what it looks like? How are we supposed to know what anything looks like when we don't really yeah. see with our eyes so much as we perceive with our mind? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Think about that. Roxanne, why are you going to be so weird? Why aren't you so weird, huh? Why are you going to be so normal? Cleared it up, peeps. <laughs> okay, I think maybe like one here. Life is a simulation. There are arguments that that is the case, chat. look like delicious snacks. <laughs> Maybe there are delicious snacks. <laughs>
Frankenstein's lobster. It's alive in putting on the Ritz crackers. <laughs> One weekend only. Any longer and this fish goes stale. Oh. Boy, this act sure does stink. Like the sea. Or, you know, like, sea? like, like, <laughs> or like rotten, rotten lobster after <laughs> like, you know, a day. Alright, I just had a thought. How come the original Frankenstein's monster is green? So that was actually, um, that was not the case. So in the book, it doesn't specify that it's any kind of color. Um, it's been a while since I read it, but I believe that the creature is just, you know, like, gray, because it's just cobbled together from body parts. Yeah, I guess it was black uh, and white in the film as well. Yes, so the reason why it was green is because it's not even because if that's what it, what the color was in the film as was that was the color of the makeup that they went with to give it that kind of unearthly um tone that they wanted that came from being undead and of course green is a color that we associate with death you know because it's the color of rot um yeah. and so that was how it it showed up in like later colorizations and color pictures was that you could see the green makeup that they put on Boris Karloff. Is that correct? I believe that's correct. Um, to give him that deathly power. Huh. And so, so he just became a green being. Yeah, and it was just because of, like, the colorizations of it later was like, oh, well, clearly Frankenstein's uh, creature is green. <laughs> No, it's just that was just uh, that was a a way of making that color, making that uh, hue slash shade, that creepy hue, um, appear on screen better. You can you can see like similar things in less sinister ways if you look at like um, old uh, t like black and white TV show sets and what they actually looked like in color. Like, you're, you're used to thinking of them as just being, um, you know, just black and white. Um, yeah. But if you actually see them, it's like all these big, beautiful, like, bright yellows and purples and what, and that's because they're going for that particular combination, that particular values, as opposed to the actual, like, RGB content. That's pretty wild. It is pretty wild. And that's, you know, if you if you ever do any, like, black and white photography, you'll see that you still, like, be able to adjust the RGB, the red, the red, green, blue levels, even though there aren't any colors in it. And that's because they're, you're determining the different, like, wavelengths of light that are appearing in your black and white picture, even though it is indeed black and white. <laughs> there you go, folks. We're all learning. Uh, chat has added, if I recall correctly, most movie blood is orange to counteract the blue filters commonly used. So, yeah. I have not heard that, but that would be a similar, uh, a, a similar reason, is, you know, I guess they have the, the blue sky filters probably to, to cut out on glare, would be my guess. Um, and so they have to make, you know, the, uh, you know, if they want the red to stand out, it has to be a different color. Adding a little bit more blue, because it could be a blue, a blue-green lobster. We'll add a little bit more green in after this. Frankenstein is the Hulk. Frankenstein is the Hulk. He won't like him when he's angry. <laughs> so I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, the Hulk was not originally green, it was actually gray. And <laughs> there were too many um, there were like too many heroes that were gray and or no, it was like there were too many heroes that were like blue and whatnot, and I think it was kind of a blue gray. And I'm totally misremembering this, but um, this is from a half remembered interview from Stanley. <laughs> um, and 
whatever reason, like, the gray just didn't look good. It was a printing error, thank you. But it came out as green, um, and so they just kind of went with it. It was so, so, in short, the Hulk was not planned to be green. That's thank crazy, you. too. Thank you, chat, for that alley oop. really going in on this. I'm way over time, but I, I enjoy this drawing too much. It's... You outjid yourself. It's, it's fantastic. I mean, like, I want Frankenstein's lobster to, like, be a character now? Like, I want more Frankenstein's lobster in my life? <laughs> I mean, we can... We can, we can make this We happen. can bring this lobster back this is week true. after week. <laughs> okay. So... Then... <laughs> Undead lobster, $16.99 per pound. Is that, <laughs> is that cheap? Is that expensive? I don't know how much lobster costs. Okay, so let's get... I don't buy a lot of lobsters. Electricity is expensive. Gotta pass it off to the customer. This is true. There is a big upfront uh, investment in keeping your, your Frankenstein's lobster mobile. Okay. area. I would do red for the curtains, but um, that's going to be a little bit too Christmassy. The curtain never drops on this lobster. Gotta be up there. Apologize to the people of Massachusetts. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> For two. So it was out of love. Yeah. <laughs> Lobstar, thank you. Thank you for another alley oop from Chad. <laughs> oh wow. I'm gonna just make th make the word Frankenstein a little bit easier to read, and then I think I think we can call it. We can call it a hit. Ha cha cha cha. Yeah, 
you know, Frankenstein was all like, I'm the new Prometheus, blah, I bring, I bring light to the people, I'm such, so good at science, blah, and then it's like, no, you're a lobster, brought light, love, and joy to the people in the spotlight as Frankenstein's lobster. Full theater credits. <laughs> Friends, we did it. <laughs> what a victory. What, a, what an amazing, amazing victory. Roxanne, you really put the team on your back this yes, time. Yes, I did. <laughs> Thank you. You know what? I couldn't have done it without you giving me the suggestion. <laughs> If I, uh, I'll take, I'll take, uh, you know, two percent of the credit, one per word. Frankenstein's lobster, love you. <laughs> I hope that your 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 vagrous review comes through. <laughs> no more places, kid. Oh man, wow. I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna. I know we're over time. I'm just gonna take in its glory for like another like like ten seconds. Huh. Yeah. All right. Thank you for coming, and thank you, Paul, for 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 hanging out, even though your laptop is broken. Oh, you have, betcha. Hope to have you arting again soon. Me too. I would like to. Uh, quick reminder, everybody, it's Love Your Library Month. If you like this show or you like libraries in Western Pennsylvania in general, donate at www.loveyourlibrary.org. And your donation in the month of September will be partially matched. I don't know how much. It will be at least 1.1%. 1 100.1%. I don't... It will at least be more than what you put in eventually. I'm very good at making <laughs> pitches. pitches. You made some good pitches. Uh, yes. So, uh, be sure to donate this month. You can also just, you know, sign up for a library card at your local library or in here and just show like whatever you want. I am, I'm, I'm Roxanne. I did all the work today. <laughs> oh, I'm, uh, I'm dead. <laughs> you know what? You're alive to me. We'll bring you back one day. Oh, no. Everybody, support your local library. <laughs> <laughs>